What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV, man. And now it's time to discuss NBA free agency. Now, look, y'all, there's been a lot of big moves being made uh, during this NBA's offseason. But first, I got to address the elephant in the room, y'all. Like, I'm sorry. Michael Jeffrey Jordan is the greatest basketball player to ever play the game of basketball for real, for real, right? But he has to be one of the worst general managers in the NBA ever. Like, I'm sorry. Y'all have to show me one game that Gordon Hayward played as a member of the Boston Celtics that shows me that he is warranted $120 million over four years. Show me one game that you watched Gordon Hayward play as a member of the Boston Celtics and say, damn, Gordon worth 120, 120 M's. Gordon Hayward is worth 120 M's. Now look, on Gordon Hayward's part, I got to give it up to his agent because they went out there and they fleeced Michael Jordan and the Charlotte Hornets without a doubt. And if they giving you $120 million, I don't care, Gordon Hayward. Don't feel bad about it. Take that bread. Get your money, for real, for real. But in my mind, I'm thinking, why would you cash out Gordon Hayward like that? You know, he hasn't been the same player since he's been injured. He hasn't shown you anything to show that he is going to return to Utah Jazz form. He has some solid games here and there, but nothing to make you believe, oh, my God, he's worth 120 M's. Now, Michael Jordan has had a long history of, Having some ill-advised decisions or some bad decisions, cashing out Bismack Biombo, um, giving Tyrus Thomas $40 million back in like 2009 or something like that, which was very, very questionable. And it turned out it didn't work in their favor at all, right? And I know my uncle, my uncle told me, hey, they got to get, they got to use that money. They got to spend it on somebody. They got to use it somehow, some way. In my mind, look, y'all take that bread y'all got. And get y'all a collection of players who are solid rather than just cashing out Gordon Hayward. Now, to me, it sounds like Michael Jordan probably was panicking. He felt like, hey, we got to make a move. I got to do something to satisfy the fan base in Charlotte. I got to do something to let them know I'm trying to make something shake. So he gave it to Gordon Hayward. Now, most people, most people would have gave that to Gordon Hayward coming off of his years in Utah, not in Boston. Me, personally... I felt like Gordon Hayward was solid. He was good. He was really good in Utah. But I never felt like he was this big-time breakout superstar that everybody else thought he was going to be. That's just me, right? But, you know, hey, it is what it is. He went to Boston. You know, he got him the deal. He got injured, unfortunately. And I just don't see Gordon Hayward being this big-time just I, – I, I don't see it happening. Now, he could prove me wrong in a new system where he doesn't have Jalen Tatum – uh, excuse me – Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown and all that. He don't have Kimball Walker. He could prove to be something like special in Charlotte, but I'm not sure considering the fact that he's also playing with Terry Rozier, a guy, a point guard who is a high value shooter, along with uh, LaMelo Ball, who I believe will, high, will have one of the highest usage, usage rates in the NBA, even as a rookie, right? Now he did draft LaMelo Ball. I'm liking that pickup a whole, whole lot. I think the LaMelo is going to bowl well for this team. Michael Jordan believes he can play Terry Rozier and LaMelo Ball together. Both of these young dudes got big egos. They are, to me, they have alpha male qualities in them, like alpha, like top dog, alpha dog qualities uh, as players on the court. And I hope they don't clash, even though LaMelo is much young, is younger than Terry. I hope they don't clash at all because Terry Terry got a lot of dog in him, too, and he want to be the star of the show. Bringing in LaMelo, who's six foot seven, a guard like that, that can, ha that can handle the rock, can shoot, so on and so forth. Uh, it could bring on some problems. Y'all remember how they tried to match up Monte. They tried to pair Monte Ellis and Steph Curry together in Golden State, and eventually they always feel like one of the two had to go. I don't know if LaMelo will be staying and Terry Rozier will be moving on. Who knows? I heard rumblings about him wanting to go or him possibly being moved to the Los Angeles Clippers. That shall be seen. But I really do like the LaMelo Ball pickup a whole, whole lot. I was really confused when Golden State didn't draft LaMelo Ball because truthfully, after Klay Thompson's Achilles injury, I'm thinking, well, they should go and try to pick up LaMelo Ball. Truthfully, I feel like that could be a good, valuable piece to put into the puzzle with Steph Curry, a big, long guard who can shoot who can go to the cup, who can, I believe LaMelo is pretty solid at defense, He's much better a defender than he was as a, as a shorty, as a young boy, right? So I felt like it just made more sense, especially with the with the injury to uh, Clay Thompson. Did I say Kyrie Irving? I hope I wasn't saying Kyrie Irving. Clay Thompson, right? But unfortunately, they didn't. They decided to pick uh, the big fella, James Wiseman, right? But um, 
Yeah. So I want to know. That, I want to say this too. I'm really happy for the young boys in the NBA who are great players that's getting cashed out. These young these young brothers getting their bread thrown their way. Brandon Ingram, five years, 158 M's, 158 of them things, and he deserves it. Brandon Ingram is a very special basketball player. No lie. The first couple of years in L.A. was a struggle, but watching him in New Orleans, like how he worked out, like how he was out there working out on that court, I said, damn. And I had him on my fantasy team, my NBA team, and I'm like, young boy can hoop for real, for real. He got a nice all-around game. He can do a little bit of everything. The Slim Reaper. You know what I'm saying? Slim, real, real skinny. You know what I'm saying? Real frail frame. But the young boy is special. Like he, he does some great things. I love watching Brandon Ingram play. He does some great things when he put that ball, that basketball on the floor. For real, for real. Um, I'm excited for him, right? Fred Van Vliet. Um, I really, I didn't even, I, I didn't think Fred Van Vliet would be what he was coming out of Richard Tall State. But that year they won the championship. I'm talking about the Toronto Raptors. Everybody in a mama know Fred, uh, Fred Van Vliet was lighting Steph Curry them up. Like, no question. He was giving Steph all he could handle out there. And they wouldn't have won without him. So I'm glad the young man from Rockford, Illinois. Um, I don't even know how far Rockford is from Chicago. For I'll, I'll, <laughs> I only really know about Chicago for real. For I'm in the state of Illinois, but y'all know I'm a Chicago resident. But he got four years, $85 million. Salute to that young brother. Uh, Bo, uh, was it Bogdanovich? He got um seventy-two million over four years in Atlanta. Man, Atlanta's trying to get some young boys on their squad, bro. They got Bogdanovich. They got uh, Gallinari, Gallinari for three years, sixty-one point five million. They got Rajon Rondo, a great veteran point guard, to play and mentor. Uh, something in my eye, golly. To uh, to mentor. What's my boy name? Golly. What's the young boy name? The point guard. Now it didn't. Now it just bleak my mind. I gotta. Uh, now I gotta look at Atlanta roster because now it, the young boy named the point guard in Atlanta. Atlanta Hawks point guard. Uh, what's the boy name? Godly, you got Trey Young. Trey Young is his name, right? Yeah, Trey Young. Yeah, yeah, Trey Young. I think having Rajon Rondo play alongside of him, man, it's gonna it's gonna bode well for the young player, man. I really I really like how he plays. I like his style of play, and I think that they're gonna be a much better team now. When you got a young a guy, not a young guy, a veteran like Rajon Rondo guiding the ship. Um, what else happened? We got Montrez. Okay, let's talk about the Los Angeles Lakers. Y'all see, I got that man behind me, LeBron Raymond James Senior. Adding Montrez Harrell is a huge. Huge addition. Now, I, wanna, I know everybody want to act like Montrez ain't nothing. Like, Montrez just boo-boo now. He trash. Now that LeBron ain't got him up over there. You know what I mean? But we saw what he did for the Clippers. The man came off the bench averaging 18 a game behind Paul George. Playing, playing behind Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, um, Lou Williams. The average 18 a game over there, that's solid. Rough, rugged defender. He rough and rugged. He had a nice touch around the rim. Hard nose, athletic, um, just got the will to win. Uh, just plays with a lot of grit. That's something that the LA Lakers are going to need, especially if they're trying to repeat. Love that addition, right? Love the addition of Wesley Matthews, another guy who's perfect for LeBron style of play. LeBron goes to their cup. He's looking for shooters to dish to that's open and knock down the shot. Wes Matthews can do that for you, right? I love, absolutely love the addition of Dennis Schroeder. Now, I've seen my boy Skip Bayless on TV trying to downplay Dennis Schroeder. That it is, is an excellent addition. I heard people trying to talk about these rumblings of, what's the boy name? DeMar DeRozan coming over to L.A. to the Lakers because he's from Compton. Have him back in California playing for a childhood team he possibly rooted for. Everybody like, man, that would be nice to get DeMar DeRozan over there. Another guy that can give you some, that can give you some scoring. I did not like the DeMar DeRozan suggestion. Why? Because DeMar DeRozan would just clog up, clog up the lane. Um, he cannot stretch the floor. DeMar is not a high-value three-point shooter. He's not a three-point shooter hardly at all. His mid-range game is the truth, though. The truth. Outside of Sean Livingston, Sean Livingston um, DeMar DeRozan mid-range game is absolutely exceptional. But that's not something that the Lakers need. The Lakers need another guy who can stretch the floor with shooting. So they got it in Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder shot like 38% from three last year. Averaged like 18.5 points per game coming off the bench. Was a finalist for the six-man-of-the-year award. Can defend. 
is athletic, is long, is pretty still pretty young, my age, 27 years old. Been around for a while, but still he's not even 30 years old yet. You know what I mean? So young, energetic guy, I think, who is happy to be in a position to win. So it's, it's, it's absolutely great, right? Um, I will say this. I'm still not too sure about the Mark Gasol pickup because I feel like Mark Gasol's best years are far behind him. Now, my uncle wanted me to, he wanted to put this on my brain. He said, look, Mark Gasol is excellent for the pick and pop game, right? We know Mark Gasol can stretch the floor. He can shoot that corner three. He can shoot the three at the top of the key. He can knock down some shots. He can shoot, you know, especially for a big man his height. We saw it when he was playing with Toronto, right? Now, we know he had the same Mark Gasol from Memphis, but he can he can still do some solid things for him. And he's a big body to replace JaVale McGee, Dwight Howard, and so on and so forth. So, my uncle, like, man, I think it would be a great addition. You know, he don't got to do a whole, whole lot. Get him some valuable minutes, protect the paint a little bit, a big body, get some hard fouls, knock down a couple of shots here and there. And it'll work. It'll bowl well for the Lakers. That shall be seen. I think he kind of still too slow, right? Um... Who else? Christian Wood signed a three-year deal, $41 million to the Houston Rockets. You got uh, Joe Harris, four years, 75 of them things to stay with the Brooklyn Nets. So they stand, they keep him over there. Let me say this too. I've been hearing these rumblings about, you know, um, what's the boy name? James Harden. One, I'm forgetting. I forgot Trey Young name. I can't, be, I can't believe I did that because I didn't, I didn't watch Shorty for a while since he was at Oklahoma. But I've been hearing rumblings about James Harden. James Harden want to go over there in Brooklyn. James want to stay his ass as far away from Brooklyn as possible. That is a disaster waiting to happen. Now, I know on paper, we love to see guys with a lot of star power, with a lot of firepower all together. You got Kyrie. You got KD. You got James. Guys that can fill it up on any given night. All guys that can give you 60 any night you want it. But it's only one basketball to go around. And y'all got to remember. Kyrie Irving is not a Rajon Rondo type of point guard. He not no damn facilitator in his show when he was in Boston. He is a one-man wrecking crew, Rucker Park, on the NBA floor, right? And if he's Rucker Park, he's going to want to have the ball a lot to do some fancy plays to get his sport. He want highlights too. Let's be real. Let's be honest. And on that team, somebody going to be left out on any given night. And I don't think none of those guys are okay with being left out. James Harden not okay with being left out because he feel like if you, let's be real, Kyrie would be third fiddle on that team. James and KD would be the first, the uh, 1A and 1B, right? And Kyrie would be the third man out. And I don't believe he wants to be a third option at all. He had to be the second option and with LeBron. And he left because he wanted to have his own spotlight. Now, him and K KD, they one and the same, got similar personalities. So how to, the way they handle stuff. I love watching Kyrie play. I love watching KD play. But they got some tendencies about them that's a little funny style to me. For real, if that's me. That, that's just my opinion. They be acting a little too. They got some funny style ways about them, for real. For not funny style on some. You know what I mean? When I say funny style, they just be acting weird. Acting weird as hell. And just like, I don't know, man. They just, ah, uh, I don't, they just kind of like, they weird dudes to be around a little bit. They kind of like, like they don't gel with nobody. Always got an attitude about something to seem like, but they are phenomenal basketball players, right? Kyrie Irving left the situation with LeBron. He wanted his own situation. He teamed up with his boy, Kevin Durant. You know what I mean? That's his dog. He felt like they think it would work. Bringing James Harden over there, hell no. They're going to be fighting by the third game. Somebody going to be pissed. Kyrie going to be throwing subliminal shots. He going to be pissed at the whole team. He going to stop talking to the whole squad. He going to stop talking to Steve Nash. Next thing you know, he's going to be trade demands and stuff going to get ugly in Brooklyn. So, and I'm hearing rumblings that Kyrie's saying hell no nah, anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's saying don't bring James Harden over here. Keep his ass over there somewhere. Don't bring him over there. That's how, that's what I heard Kyrie Irving is saying. That's how he feeling. So, I believe they need to take heed to Kyrie Irving's advice. Keep James, put James Harden somewhere else. Don't have him come to Brooklyn. I think it's going to be a firestorm waiting to happen. It's going to be a, a tornado waiting to happen, man. It's just not a, I don't think it's going to be a good situation at all. Now we got to see where the hell Russell Westbrook is going to go because the Houston Rockets seem to be blowing up their team, reassembling, trying to rebuild and start all the way over like Oklahoma City did. I don't know. We got to see what's going to happen with that. Chris Paul has signed. Uh, he has been traded to the Phoenix Suns. Now, look, it's going. Phoenix Suns are going to be a better squad. Yes, absolutely. 
Chris Paul is a veteran point guard. He had a phenomenal, a great year with the OKC Thunder. Nobody thought the Thunder was going to go that damn far at all. Nobody thought they was going to make the damn playoffs. They was almost, they took, what you call it, the seven games. <coughs> Excuse me, was it seven or six? How many games OKC? I think it was seven. OKC took, OKC took Houston to seven games, fam. Shea Gilgis, Alexander, and them boys over there, man. Chris Paul had them boys hooping. That's one of the best years Chris Paul didn't ever play. He's a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer without question. But if you look at this move, it's going to be great for, um, what's my boy name? God damn, man. I'm, I'm messing up all type of names, man. It's going to be great for my boy Devin Booker over there in Phoenix. It's going to be great for him. It's going to be great for DeAndre Ayton. But for Chris Paul, man, what they, I mean, it's going to be a great story. They're going to get to the playoffs. They ain't making no noise, though. And I'm, I feel sad for Chris Paul because he's been on a lot of great teams with the Clippers, with the Houston Rockets. They never was able to get over that hump and get them a get him a championship, bro. He's still seeking that first championship. And he ain't going to get it in Phoenix. So I don't know, man, what's going to happen. I don't know if, I don't know if this is going to be his last year. I don't know if he's going to try to sneak in, sneak his way to a contender midseason. I don't know what's going to happen, but we we shall see. He was a good Samaritan, a good soldier for OKC. Didn't demand a trade. That's because he want that bread. Nobody going to pick up that bread. Nobody was picking up that bread, for real, for real, that he got on his contract. So he stayed a good soldier in Oklahoma City, helped them young boys win, ingratiated himself with the city, and they had a great run, and everybody embraced Chris Paul for just staying didn't for not asking to be traded. But this situation, man, Chris Paul needs to be somewhere where he can win. But it's up to him. It's his career ultimately, right? Um, who else? Sergi Baca signing to the Clippers. Um, it's a I mean, it's a it's a good pickup for the Clippers. It's a good pickup. I don't know how much of a good pickup it is. Serge ain't the same Sergi Baca that we remember. He ain't been defensive team. What on the defensive team in what six years or something like that? He, he ain't been on them big defensive teams. The first team, remember he was first team, first team, uh, first all defensive team. Like when he was Oklahoma City, he ain't been that in a long, long, long time. Maybe you know he will be something. Will they will help Kawhi Leonard and them will help awaken something in his game to help him have a resurgence? Maybe playing LeBron or somebody and being a, being on the contending team would help him resur have a resurgence, but. I don't know, man. I think Serge Ibaka's best days are behind him as well, as well as with Mark Gasol. And these are two players who were with the Toronto Raptors when they won a championship. So, I mean, I could be proven wrong. Who knows, right? Paul Mills about to get into that paper. He got another one-year deal, $10 million. But Paul, I done looked at how much money Paul Mills have been made over his career. Coming out of Louisiana Tech, that brother should be proud of what he accomplished. That like the bread he making man, that's that's is he made some bread out this league. For real. Ooh shit. Malik Beasley got four years, 60 M's? Man, these young boys are getting paid. Bam out of the bayou getting his bread as he should be, or should I call him Bam out of the bayou? You know how Kendrick Perkins was Kendrick Perkins was messing up Bam out of the bayou name so bad he bam out of the bayou, making Bam sound like a damn swamp monster. He turned Bam into a swamp monster. Bam out of the bayou. But Bam getting his bread as he should, deservingly so. Play phenomenal. Like with the uh, Miami Heat, I had this another guy I had on my um another guy I had on my NBA fantasy team. Bam was putting up excellent numbers, man. I'm glad he's being rewarded for that. Um Tristan Thompson has is going to the Boston Celtics. That's a nice pickup, y'all. Now I know y'all know Tristan Thompson for being a uh <laughs> an honorary Kardashian. But I'm going to say this. I had Tristan Thompson on my fantasy team a couple of years. And Trish, Trish, like Tristan was having games where he was having 27 and 17. Like 16 and like 15. 15 and 18 rebounds. 18 and 14, 16 rebounds. He was having games like that in three blocks. He is a great hustle player. A guy that can give you a lot of rebounds, give you hustle points. He's just like a high-energy guy that I think that the Boston Celtics need. They need a guy like this on his Tice to, to, um, to replace Tice and get him some young energy. I think Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, will love playing with, with Tristan Thompson. And he on a two-year deal. After he didn't remember, Bron got Bron get his boys paid. I don't give a damn what you say. 
Rich Paul them out here operating like mafioso bosses. You hear me? They out here operating like what's my man Stringer Bell on the wire, cutting them deals for that guap, for that bread. And when Braun put his foot on the Cleveland Cavaliers, the organization's neck to Patriots and Thompson, as they should have after he balled out that year when um, Kyrie got hurt and Kevin Love got hurt. And it was Braun and Della Vadova and Tristan Thompson and J.R. Smith against the Warriors. Tristan balled out, man. He should have been paid handsomely for that. Like J.R. Smith should have got his $56 million that he got after he hit them clutch-ass shots. When Cleveland won the championship in 2016, if y'all remember, in that second half at Game 7, Cleveland was getting out of the game. Steph was finna shoot them out of They was like the, the shooting out Steph. Golden State was about to get them up out of there. And they were down by like almost double. They were like down by like eight or nine. J.R. Smith hit like back-to-back -back huge threes to get them back in the game. You know what I'm saying? He was crucial for them defensively. So he should have been paid too. But um, Tristan Thompson coming out there, $80 million, getting him two years, $19 million deal, solid. Uh, Jay Crowder, three years, $30 million to Phoenix Suns. Phoenix out here trying to rack up, fam. Trying to rack up, no lie. Um, who went to Milwaukee? So somebody went to Milwaukee. Who the hell went to Milwaukee? Let me look at the Milwaukee. Milwaukee Bucks roster. They got somebody, man. Milwaukee Bucks. Who the Milwaukee Bucks ro roster? Let's see when they squad. They got some new additions, man. Uh, damn, who did they get? They got... I'm trying who did they get? Uh, they got some folks now. I, I'm trying to remember who who did they pick up? Man, let me see. Milwaukee Bucks trade. Let's see. Let's see who they who they got on the trades, man. Let's see. Uh shit. Man, I can't find who they who did they get right now, man. Who did they get? Um oh, Drew Holiday. Right? Are they, are they, did, they, did it go through? Damn. That Drew Holiday pickup is... That is a great pickup for the Milwaukee Bucks. They need that, especially with how Eric Gordon them was going MIA. I'm not Eric Gordon. Um, damn. What's the boy? Eric Bledsoe. How Eric Bledsoe was going MIA. They need Drew Holiday. They need... They, they had to have that as leverage to get Giannis to try to stay... Uh, to, to keep him in Milwaukee. At least for a little bit, goddammit. They need to do anything they could to keep him, and I think this will keep him for a little bit. I, I hope for, they better hope it will. They better hope it will. And before I get up out of here, man, I want to shout out my boy, DJ, Aug DJ Augustine. I've been watching DJ play since he was at Texas, when he was out there with KD. KD and AJ, AJ Abrams, right? When he was with Kevin Durant and AJ Abrams. DJ stayed two years at Texas. DJ been around for a long time, but he always keeps a job, a very serviceable guard, more than serviceable, a starting guard on a lot of teams, man. He came with the Bulls. I think this is when DJ, uh, when D Rose was hurt, when it was injured and was going through the injuries, we had DJ Augustine for a year and he was great for us in Chicago, right? Um, DJ has always found a way to keep himself on a squad and keep himself getting paid. So DJ got... 21 million to go to, none other than the, than the Milwaukee Bucks. Another guard from Milwaukee to help keep them cons consistent and keep them afloat when they get in trouble and get these other squads. Man, they need some guys that are reliable and are consistent. So that's a great pickup. Shout out to Dwight Howard on a one year deal for $2.6 million. We're set with the 76ers. I myself was hoping that he would have resigned with the Lakers. But I guess in trying to sign other guys on the squad, they couldn't find enough money or they could have gave some money to Dwight, goddammit. I don't know what they own, man. They didn't want to keep Dwight for whatever reason. Dwight is in Philly. Shout out to Dwight. He over there with Doc Rivers. Um, Dwight was absolutely great for the Lakers this season. I don't give a damn what Shaq hating ass was talking about. The Lakers wouldn't have won uh, without Dwight, especially against that Denver, in that Denver Nuggets series against Jokic. They needed him badly. So I ain't going to never uh, try to shit on Dwight's name at all. Carmelo going to stay in Portland. I'm glad Carmelo is still around. I don't know. You know, the Bulls got the Bulls gave Gary Temple one year, $5 million. I don't know what the Bulls own. I have no idea. They drafted a guy that came off the bench in Florida State, averaging nine a game. But I did see him have some highlights playing and hooping and open gym, and he looked pretty solid. You know what I'm saying? He looked like he can do something out there. But again, 
That's just open gym. That's just open runs. We got to see how he plays in the actual organized NBA game. We got to see how that go. Lakers keeping Marquise Morris. Great for them. They better be glad to do that. Willie Cauley Stein is going to the uh, Dallas Mavericks. Two years, $8.2 million. And look, when I was talking about Gordon Hayward, shouldn't have got that uh, 120 million, 220 million. You know who should get that and then some? You know who should get 120 million and then some and more? Luca goddamn Doncic. That man, the truth. The truth, like my boy Errol Spence Jr. Or how did Jamaica, how did the, the, the rosters be saying it? The truth, the truth. That man, the truth. Luca Doncic needs to get that bread. And he, I'm sure Mark Cuban going to pay that man that he going to make sure he get paid handsomely. Him and Christoph Porzingis, I don't know. I think they could have popped the uh, Clippers. I think they could have got the Clippers out of there if Porzingis would have been healthy for sure. But um, these are the, all the, the big, big NBA offseason moves. Machiavelli Mills TV, I thank y'all for rocking with me. I talk too much as it is. Peace.